In this video, I'm going to show you all the software that I use to run my eBay dropshipping business and how the software works. What's up, Paul here from dropshippingtitans.com. You know, I've been making YouTube videos about eBay dropshipping for over two years now. And in that time, the software that I use to run my business has definitely changed and evolved. So it's pretty understandable when someone watches one of my more recent videos and says, wait, you're using this software? I thought you were using that other software. So I kind of wanted to put into one video all the software that I'm using now as of almost November 2019. Now, of course, this might change again in the future, but I feel pretty solid about the software that I'm using, pretty comfortable with it, and I don't anticipate this changing for a while, but hey, you never know. But at least as of November 2019, this is all the software that I use for my eBay dropshipping business. And I do wanna let you guys know that links to all these software will be underneath this video. Uh, those will be affiliate links, but this is actually the software that I use to run my business. Otherwise, I wouldn't be talking about it. So the process of dropshipping always starts with finding the right products to sell. And to do my product research, I use a tool called Zeek Analytics. Zeek Analytics is pretty powerful. There's a lot of different things that it does. And I'll show you kind of what I've been using it for different ways. So here it is right here. And on the left, there's different types of ways that you can do research here. Um, a good place to start is in category research. And if you click there, or start, sorry, in product research rather, and I'm going to type in computer desks. And you can filter this out by shipping location. I always do United States, the price, let's say anywhere between 200 and 300 dollars this is going to be different for everyone depending on what your selling limits are for instance feedback i'm going to ignore anyone with less than 30 feedback and anyone with more than 10,000 feedback and i want to look at anything that's sold in the last 30 days and i'll click search and what this is doing is it's finding products that have sold in the last 30 days that meet these criteria that are at least $20, between 20 and $300, and someone who sold it who has at least 30 feedback, but not more than 10,000 feedback. And so you can look here and see what types of items are selling in the computer desk niche. You could even look at the items, see who's selling it, and see what else they're selling as well. So this kind of gives you a good idea of what is being sold on eBay. Another thing I like to do is click on category research on the left and pretty much run the same search, computer desks, and go from between $20, oops, $20, 300, and 30 feedback and 10,000 feedback, and click on search because what this is going to give you is a more broad overview of how well computer desks are selling. And specifically what I like here is this, the average product price, $62.43. So I know that realistically, I can sell computer desks on eBay, I can drop ship them. If they're somewhere around $62.43 or less, anything more, they might still sell, but probably you know, there's a lesser chance that's going to happen. And as you see that 70% of the listings that show up on this page are successful. So there's a bunch of other things you can do in there with it, but I wanna show you actually my favorite feature of Zeek Analytics, and that's called the competitor research. If I click on that, that allows me to scan any seller store on eBay. So I just found a random seller here on eBay. They're not actually a dropshipper, but you would want to scan a dropshipper store. I'll just copy down his name or their name rather, paste it in here and click search. And it's going to show me all the items that this person has sold in the last 30 days, as well as some awesome other information about them. So it tells me that they are selling from China. They have a very high sell through rate. I kind of ignore the sell through rate because of the way it's calculated is not really what I consider to be a true sell-through. 
they show me how many active listings they have, 1,890. And in the past 30 days, they've sold 7,346 items. That's pretty, that's pretty insane. So they really have this dialed in correctly. They're really doing well with their store. Uh, total earnings, $778,213.90. So like I said, this is not a drop shipper. This is someone who does wholesale direct from China. So they, they can afford to sell cheaper items, you know, and uh, sell a high volume of them. Um, but yeah, if you do this for a drop shipper, you can see all their most popular items here. And then you could sell those same items because if someone else is drop shipping them successfully, you can drop ship the same items as well. So this is always where I start with Zeek Analytics. Now, once I actually find an item to sell, it's now time to list it up for sale on eBay. So for instance, let's say we wanted to sell this computer desk from Home Depot. Well, now it's time to work with AutoDS. AutoDS is a tool that does a lot to help me manage my eBay dropshipping business. But we're going to start with using it to quickly list this item for sale on eBay pretty much automatically. So I'm coming over to AutoDS and clicking on the left where it says Uploader. And what I'm going to do is copy down the URL for this item. Now it doesn't just have to be Home Depot, they also have a bunch. They have Walmart, they have Banggood, they have Home Depot, Wayfair, Costco, Overstock, Costaway, and they're always adding more as well. But I'm going to paste in the Home Depot URL and choose Home Depot, and then just click grab details. And what it's doing is, well, this is the first thing that it's doing. It's telling me that there's a word inside the description of this item, the word patented, and that's like a red flag. They're kind of giving me a red flag here that says, hey, you might want to be careful listing this item because it's patented. So I might actually not list this one. I might list a different item. But for now, just for this example, I'll click let me continue. And that feature right there, that pop up is one of the things I really like about AutoDS is they kind of warn you if these items are going to be a problem or not so that you don't run into any risk or any problems when you're listing your items. So what did it just do? It pulled in the title here, which I'll usually change. It then pulled in the price and it automatically calculates how much you then need to sell it for in order to cover your eBay fees, your PayPal fees, and in order to make a profit. And it automatically applies that new price. It pulls in a bunch of item specifics, which eBay really loves item specifics. The more you have, the better. And AutoDS pulls in a lot of them. And it pulls in all the images. And they have a really nice looking description here with the whole description it pulls in from Home Depot and the image right here, making everything look really nice. All I have to do is scroll down to the bottom, click Save and Schedule. And then I come up to the Chrome extension and it will add the item to eBay for me just like that. So that just took a matter of seconds to list that item onto eBay from Home Depot using AutoDS. Now that's not all AutoDS does. AutoDS now has linked up the item from Home Depot with the listing on eBay. So if this price changes, AutoDS will automatically make sure that the price changes on eBay for me, either up or down and stock as well. So if this item goes out of stock, the price or the item will go out of stock on eBay for me as well. So all that's being done for me automatically. But if you wanted to see it, you could just click on the tab that says active listings. This will show me all the items that I listed using AutoDS. Uh, looks like none right now, because this is just a test account that I use. And you can see all the price changes and, and things like that. Uh, what else can you do here? Well, once you actually get an order, you can click on the tab that says orders and AutoDS is pulling in all the orders into its software. It makes it very easy to stay organized with your orders. So on the right here, there's a status column. So you can change the status to you ordered it from your supplier's website or that it shipped out or that it's been canceled. Whatever you need to do helps you stay super organized. You can also add notes to each order. So you can add a note saying, saying if there's any problems with it. There's also a field here for 
purchase order ID. So once you order the item from Home Depot, you can then enter the purchase ID here so that you don't have to try to remember what the order number was for this particular eBay order. It's saved for you right there. All right, but we have the orders here and now we're ready to purchase the item from Home Depot. We're gonna use this as an example right here, this one. How do you do this? Well, this is where another tool that I use comes in called Spot and Paste. Now, Spot and Paste is a Chrome extension. You can see it up here. It does a few different things, and I wanna show you how it helps me fulfill my orders and how it speeds up the ordering process. So, once you install the Chrome extension, it modifies the AutoDS website to add these buttons right here and this button over here. So for this item, I'm going to select on this dropdown, um, Be Frugal. And what it's going to do is it's going to open up the Be Frugal website, which is a cash back website that I use. It will automatically go through that website so that I get cash back for my purchase and brings me over to the item on homedepot.com. So here you see the item right here. Just brought me right here just by clicking one button. Then all I have to do is click add to cart and then I can begin the checkout process. Now, once I'm on this screen, I now have to paste the buyer's shipping address on this page because that's where the item is being shipped to. Now, this is where spot and paste also comes in handy because over here on AutoDS, on the right here, there's this column that says copy. So if I click copy and then come back to Home Depot and click on the Chrome extension and click paste, it just pasted the entire address in there for me. So just two clicks, I didn't have to do copy and paste, copy and paste. And this doesn't just work on Home Depot, it also works on Walmart. It There's a ton of them it works for, I can't even name all of them. Maybe it shows you somewhere on here. It works on a lot of websites. And even if it doesn't work on your website, there's actually a way to teach it how to work on the website that you wanna work with. So uh, it really helps speed up the ordering process. So that's how I use Spot and Paste with AutoDS to help me fulfill my orders. Now, once the order has been placed, we are now going to wait for Home Depot or whatever supplier we're using to actually ship out the item. Once they do, the supplier is going to give us a tracking number. And that tracking number, we now have to upload to eBay as proof that we actually shipped out the item. Now, if you're doing just a few orders a day, it's fine to just go into your email, get the tracking number and upload it to eBay yourself. But wouldn't it be great if there's a way to automate that? And that's why we use TrackerBot. This is it right here. The way you set it up is it connects with your Gmail account and it scans Gmail looking for all your orders your order history from PayPal emails, and it also looks at all the tracking numbers that you receive from your suppliers. So it's able to tell when you have new tracking numbers that need to be uploaded. And then just by clicking a few buttons, it will upload those tracking numbers to eBay. It really speeds up the process a lot. I'm not gonna show exactly how it works, but it's pretty easy to use. Now, that's primarily what I use to run the business, so to speak but there's one final piece of software I wanna talk about that kind of helps more with some of the business side of it, a little bit more boring, but it is something that I wanted to talk about. And this is it right here, it's called Tax Jar. Now on eBay, when you're selling on eBay, you might be responsible for collecting sales tax and you might be responsible for collecting sales tax in many different states. And that can be confusing. And tax jar makes it super easy for you to manage your sales tax. So this is the way it works. I've set up an account and what you do is you link it up with your, your PayPal account. Actually, if you have multiple PayPal accounts, like I do, you can link it up to multiple PayPal accounts. You can also link it up to your Amazon account. If you're selling on Amazon, I have two different businesses, one for eBay, one for Amazon. So I have two different tax jars. These are linked up to my two PayPal accounts for eBay. And it gives you some information here, like this button on the right that says check for economic nexus. This will let you know whether you should be collecting sales tax for some states. So the way it works is 
you are responsible for collecting sales tax if you start selling enough into that state. And this will check to see if you hit that threshold yet. And also tells you other stuff like your year to date gross sales. Mine for eBay is, as you see, a little over $800,000. And more importantly, this section right here on the dashboard shows you when you're supposed to file your sales tax return for each state that you're registered with and how much you owe them. So you see here, North Carolina, I have to file this in the next few days and I owe them $387. Colorado here, it says I don't have to file for another month. I only owe them $3.71. Now it's kind of like, that seems pretty low. You can click on it, see all the transactions and figure out what happened. So in this case, I see I don't sell a lot into Colorado. And there's another component of it I'll talk about in one second. You also see here, Louisiana, um, this one is orange, which means that I've under collected. Now, sometimes the amount you under collect is not a lot. So in this case, I saw that I actually owe something like 40 something dollars. So it's not a big difference, but they will warn you if you've under collected so that you can then fix that so that you can collect the proper amount for the next filing period. And the other great thing about this is that each state has a different filing period. Some want you to file every year, quarter or month. So this helps keep track of everything. I just log in to here in the first of every month and it tells me what I have to do. And you see for Pennsylvania here, I've collected zero and it's green, which means that is correct. And the reason that's correct is because eBay is now collecting sales tax for us. So more and more tax jar is becoming irrelevant or not necessary because eBay is taking care of sales tax for us for many of the states. So Pennsylvania is one of them. So that's why mine says zero. And the other one, what was the other one? Colorado, they just started collecting for that one, which is why that number is not zero, but it is lower. So what you would do is then come in here and click on sales tax report. And then it will then walk you through the process of how to file your sales tax return and send the money to North Carolina so that you can be all paid up. They also have an option to do auto file where they will automatically file the sales tax return for you. And then you don't have to worry about it. Generally, I find for most states, it's not that hard to do it yourself. North Carolina, the reason I haven't done it yet is because it's without a doubt one of the worst states. It's just so tedious filing your sales tax return with North Carolina. I've been meaning to, to set up auto file and I just keep forgetting to do it. So I really have to remember to do it because it just takes too much time to do North Carolina. Um, but yeah, like I said, more and more that's becoming irrelevant because eBay is handling sales tax for us. So there you go, guys. That is all the software I use for my eBay dropshipping business. And again, I'll have links to all these resources underneath this video. So the next time you're wondering, hey, what does Paul use for his dropshipping business? Come back to this video and check it out. And uh, if it ever changes, I'll put that in the description as well. Let me know in the comments section what software you use to run your business or let me know if there's any software that you really want me to do a review of. I'll check them out. I'm always looking for new ways to streamline my business, to improve it, and to learn about some new features out there that I didn't even know existed. So let me know in the comments section if you have any suggestions for me. Otherwise, if you got some value out of this video, I would appreciate it if you smash the like button down below and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.